Ulil Absar Abdallah, intelektual NU soal prasangka terhadap Yahudi dan pengalaman di Israel. Siapa yang tidak kenal Ulil Absar Abdallah, intelektual NU yang kerap mengkritik Israel. Kemarin dalam sebuah acara di Jakarta, Ulil Absar Abdallah terbuka pengalamannya ketika belajar di madrasah dan ketika berada di Israel. Saudara Fakta Israel berharap Anda bisa menyimak dengan utuh agar tidak terjadi salah paham. I think this is uh, one of the rare occasion that we have in ICSD to have a Jewish guest and to have a discussion and conversation uh, inviting a Jewish scholar and Jewish uh, guest. So this is it. So 
I win in God, I created you human, male and female, and make you into tribe, races, um, so that you might know each other. So the Arabic term for knowing each other is lita'aru, meaning uh, you meet people and know about them firsthand, not from books, magazines, media, TV, because you know, many prejudices, including prejudices about the Jews and Muslims in the West, yeah, all prejudices often uh, were created through this avenues, TV, media, and so forth. People never see other people in person, but they read about them through reporting by journalists, by writers, who have their own prejudices as well. So when, for example, when, when, the, when, when the Western journalists visit uh, Middle East, for example, to write some features, some stories about Muslim in Egypt in, or in Indonesia, for example, they write, they report it through certain lenses, through certain prejudices. And these prejudices created stories about Muslim and about the Jews. But people, the readers, the readers of the magazine, of the you know newspapers, of the, the viewers of TV shows, they never see those persons who they read in media. That's created prejudices and mythology for other people. And this is our problem. And so I think this is an important wisdom from the Quran. Uh, so that you know each other. Knowing each other is not just knowing in a cognitive sense, meaning that we read about other people from books. Of course, reading about other people through books and magazines is, is important, but it's not sufficient. Because sometimes books and magazines and newspapers, stories and media, it's created also misinformation as well, especially in today's era of uh, the so-called post-truth uh, era, you know, uh, people believe in whatever they want to believe. Because now people tend to read anything that fit their prejudices. And now we have, uh, you know, the current uh, social media of technology that created the so-called al algorithm of information. So when you open your social media and then you select certain uh, topics, you get fed with this topic just because I click once, uh, uh, you know, advertisement on the website. This is how the algorithm of modern information works. When people click certain information and it's happened to be misinformation, not information, misinformation, then you get misinformed more and more. And you get more prejudices. So this is this is the paradox of the modern uh, modern technology of information. You have an illusion of having a lot of information about anything, but what you get is not information. It is actually misinformation, <laughs> including misinformation about other people. And I believe that that Islamophobia, um, anti-Semitism. And phobia about many things because now we have a lot of phobia. For and this misinformation is enforced, is you know, galvanized by this modern technology of uh, digital information. So this is something that we are struggling with uh, these days, and this is our challenge as people of belief, of all belief, Muslim, Jewish, Christian, and and so forth. They. I think we have a challenge. How we overcome this situation of, uh, you know, of uh, misinformation that get uh, enforced by the modern technology of the information. So this is what what I can say, and in response to Dr. Lai Gordon, and again, I want to thanks. I wonder for speaking to us and for me uh, what matters to us at least to me is not
not what you say. Because what you say is, yeah, it's, it's important, of course. Yeah. But what matters to me is that you are here with us. Because for me, knowing other people in person, you see person, that, that person, you see that person, you hear that it is voice, and her voice is more important than what that person said. Because, because personal encounter will overcome prejudices. And I, I, will, I will end my presentation uh, with telling a story that I got. I spent years uh, in traditional Matawa. Yeah, I studied Islam. Mm -hmm. I'm just almost all the way to Islam. Uh, traditional Islam. And I learned a lot about uh, Jewish men and Muslim men. <laughs> Muslim men. Uh, prejudices that was uh, produced by our ulama in the past. But I never see the Jewish people in person. The first time I met really in person the Jewish people was when I visited Jerusalem in Southern and with Romo Hari. Uh, Father Hari is here with us. Romo Hari, Ah, Romo Hari, how can we go to the first time? 2000. Yeah. So I visited. I'm, I have uh, a lot of visiting Jerusalem with uh, numbers of friends. Uh, seven, yeah. Seven, six. Yeah. And that was in 2000. That was the first time I see Jews in person. And I was scared. I, I went into, uh, into the wall, the wedding wall. I went there. And then suddenly, a rabbi, a tragedy, a rabbi from Yemen. He was there. He was with the traditional uh, time. So he grabbed my hand and took me into a cavity, a cavity inside, uh, just next to the wall. He took me uh, inside. I was so scared. Uh, I don't know what, what, what he wanted, but he took me inside. And then he took me into one corner and then he asked me to kneel and then he prayed. He prayed. I was, I was, I was so confused. What kind of prayer is he praying? Is he praying that I think of a Jew or what? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. But I was scared. I just have it. I say I'm into this prayer. I believe that we pray good prayer. <laughs> and, then, and then he let me out. That was the first time I see the Jews in person. And that personal encounter with the Jewish people is real life. You know, overcome all prejudices that I have about the Jewish people from the teaching that I got in Madrasa. <coughs> A simple a short, a brief meeting with the real people. That's why I say that what matters to us or to me today from uh, Dr. Gordon's speech is not his speech for me, but the fact that he is with us, with his flesh, with his blood, with his body, with us. Thank you very much. Salam damai dari Fakta Israel.